Hi, this is Thomas J. Seaborn Photography. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through uh, a series of images I took on my most latest trip to Yosemite. Uh, as you can see, I was shooting some Star Trail images. Uh, just quickly here in Bridge, you can see that uh, these four images were my test shots. Uh, I always shoot my test shot as wide as my camera will go at 30 seconds with an ISO of 6400. Uh, it's going to be a super noisy image and I don't really care about the results so much as I just want to get my framing correct and uh, my focusing correct. So once I got the settings I wanted, uh, like the framing I wanted, I programmed my uh, timer shuttle release cable to uh, do 20 shots at 300 seconds each. Uh, my default f-stop usually when I'm shooting star trails is f4. I like that because it gives me enough depth of field and enough light gathering capabilities to make great images. Normally I would shoot at ISO 400, but tonight there was, uh, the moon wasn't gonna rise until like 3 a.m., so I decided to double my normal ISO to about where my uh, camera, the Sony A850, is uh, uh, an ISO number that doesn't uh, produce too much noise. I'm guessing that the newer camera models are probably gonna be able to go up to 1600, maybe even higher, but I can't afford to buy a new camera. So let me show you something I did wrong. Uh, I didn't triple check my settings, which is kind of stupid. Sometimes you just get arrogant because you make a YouTube video, so you think you're a freaking expert. Uh, so I forgot to change the drive mode on my camera from single to multiple. So what happened is, is I had my series all program ready to go. I hit start, uh, and it's going to be a five-minute exposure. So I got wait, 30 divided by 60 is five. That's correct. Uh, I was planning on light painting, you can see uh, Lower Yosemite Falls, but what happened was, you know, I started the series, I got back after 30 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever it was, and the camera wasn't taking photos. So you can see that this was, ex the exposure started at 918, and here, it, uh, the next image in the series is uh, 941, so obviously I can't use this image because there's going to be a huge gap in the star trails. You can actually see how much the stars jump just in 20 minutes, when, and this is facing north, so the stars move even slower. So I'm just going to go ahead here and just open up this image in camera raw to show you the adjustments I made to all the raw images. Uh, the images I'm going to show you that I process in Photoshop are going to be JPEGs that uh, I just ran a batch on. So I adjusted the temperature from 3800 to uh, 3100 I guess it was. That might be a little too blue actually but I like the color of the sky. Uh, Tint stayed the same. You can see I bumped up the exposure almost a whole stop. So that was what five minutes with no moon looked like. And I like to increase the sky to the point where, or the exposure until the sky doesn't look blown out, which is right around there. You want to have this brightness here, I think, because it helps separate the sky from the mountains. Highlights I gave a slight bump to. That just makes your stars and the sky slightly brighter. Shadows is... Uh, you know, it's pretty uh, pretty amazing slider in uh, the latest edition of ACR. It really does a good job filling in the shadows, though I think it produces more noise than it should, but hey, whatever. I'll take the uh, ability to throw a little light into the shadows and deal with the noise in uh, Photoshop. Adjusting the whites can also make the stars and the skies brighter. Um, I don't adjust the blacks at all here. You can actually see the foreground's a little bit lit up by my headlamp, probably. But let me just show you what happens with the blacks. Like, it goes ape shit real quick. Increasing the blacks actually looks pretty good. Um, I didn't play with that before, obviously. That's interesting. I'm going to leave that there. And then clarity. Watch the difference that clarity makes in the sky. I think that looks pretty good. I don't want to take it overboard just because I think it'll make the stars look jagged. Um can always bump up a little bit of these two too. So that's pretty much what I did, adjusted to all the raw images. Um, it's important to make the adjustments equal across all of your images. Otherwise, when you get to stacking in Photoshop, if your sky is, if you ex push the sky on one of your images by two stops, it's going to be two stops throughout the entire uh, you know, stack because those will be the brightest pixels. Unless the moon came up or if you screwed up with your light painting and somehow got your flashlight to hit the sky, which I've done many, many a times. So I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel, and then I'm going to go up here and open all of the JPEG images. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, though, so I'll come back when I have these all open in Photoshop. So 
So I just want to show you before I open up all of these in Photoshop just the series of images and how the different foregrounds kind of got painted in different ways. Uh, so here, this is no light painting on anything, which actually that's a lie because there's a little bit on the foreground. This image right here, there's no light painting whatsoever. That is just the light from the sky. Um, these clouds don't do you any favor when stacking star trails either, um, but what are you going to do? The night wasn't a clear sky, but I got lucky here for a while. So then you can see here that I used a uh, really, really powerful flashlight to illuminate Lower Yosemite Falls. Um, it's almost too strong, and in an ideal world, you'd be able to equally paint upper and lower Yosemite Falls with a, the torch. I don't know how I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm not sure if it's possible, but it would certainly look cool if you could. Um, anyway, you can scroll down here to see my the last two series. I was getting bored, so I like painted the heck out of it. Um, you can see how it's just really tough to get everything equal. Um, I don't know why I decided to have a really bright beam here, but whatever. Um, it is what it is. Luckily, you can kind of make a mask out, or if you want to, if it's your last two series, uh, two images, you can just not include those in your stack. But let's go over to Photoshop and... Uh... Okay, now that we've got all of our JPEG images opened up in Photoshop, we are going to use what I call the light and blending method to stack our star trails. So we do that by going to File, Scripts, load files into stack click add open files double check to make sure that there's nothing random in there that you don't want and then hit OK this only takes a couple of seconds um, and now I'll show you how um, I used varying layer masks to create the foreground that I am going for because as you can see over here in our layers, uh, these images have really nasty foregrounds that I would never really want to use. So let's go through all of these and just turn them into light and, while paying attention to which images uh, are going to need some form of mask. So here we're definitely going to need a mask. I think this needs a mask too for the foreground, but I'm not sure. This needs a mask because we have too much light painting here on the waterfall. Um, but we should do that after we switch it to light and mode because that'll show the difference in the lighting in real time. So that's looking good. Okay, so this is going to need a mask maybe. This actually has pretty decent even lighting, which I kind of like. I actually kind of like this side light over here. Okay, definitely do not like the lighting on this one. I'm going to go ahead right now and just make this mask. So with our big soft brush tool, I'm going to go all the way black on this one because I don't like the lighting on this at all. Um, just go ahead and paint this off. Why is it not working? Maybe it's on this one. Let's take a look. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So it's the image below it that I don't like. Let's go ahead and bring this back. This is the great part about mask. You just got to paint back over what you like. So much better. There we go. Uh, continuing on. Lighten, lighten, lighten. So we know that the image below this one now has some issues down here that we're not going to like. So I just remove that little red, the, the reddish glow on the rock. Okay, so we know that uh, this one's going to have some nasty lighting that we don't like. So let's switch to lighten. Go ahead and paint away the nasty light. Pretty cool, huh? I think it's best to go through. Um, you can always go back and correct this too, which is great about working with layers, obviously. Um, but I like to do this right here on the spot, just especially with the lighting I know I don't like. Because um, sometimes going back and trying to figure out which layers are the layers to blame for the lighting I don't like can be a challenge, especially if you've shot a large series of images. Oh, God. That just looks so gross. So 
So I know that for both of these, I'm going to just paint off the whole frickin' bottom. So we're going to mask that, mask with this. So we're going to grab a fat, fat brush and just paint this whole thing away. You can even get pretty close to these stars, no one will really notice. But in generally, I don't like photographing trees for this very reason. A, they move. B, they're a pain in the ass to clone out. Um, there is a way to copy your layer mask, but for some reason it's totally lost on me right now, so... Luckily this isn't that complicated of a layer. If it was something really complicated, I'd go back and remind myself how to do that. Something to do with alpha channels or something. Or probably something even easier. Send me a message if you want to, or leave a comment reminding me how to do that. So there we go. I think we're looking pretty freaking good. Um, so we could go back and we could fine tune the light of even more if we wanted to, but uh, I think we're looking pretty good, except for the top of this tree. We're also going to want to go back and kind of reduce the look of... I think it was just a little too intense on the uh, waterfall here. But let's grab a just a little bit. Um, this is what's so cool about the layer mask, too, is you can kind of control the degree of the brightness just by changing the color in which you paint. So there we go. Um... I'm pretty happy with this image, actually. It's not perfect. It's not the best work. Um, I got a little bored and didn't let my star trails go the whole freaking way. But, you know, when you're by yourself in the middle of nowhere and it's dark, yeah, it's just tough. Well, alrighty. Uh, thanks for checking out this video. Uh, this is Thomas J. Seaborn Photography showing you how I uh, control the foreground lighting using layer masks. Take care.